Welcome back. In this lesson, we are going to create a camera that we can animate now and start to refine the shaders a little bit more based off of that camera angle. So let's go to create cameras and I'll just type in camera or type in, I'll just click camera and I'll choose the camera here. So now we're looking through that. I'm just gonna back it out a little bit and I wanna get it kind of centered up in the center of this object. So of our logo. So I want to zero out the X translation because I want it to be totally centered and I want to back it out a little bit and maybe choose a different focal length, something like 50. And then let's turn on the film gate so we can see what kind of framing we're going to have. So let's just scrub the timeline a little bit to kind of see the framing that we're going to achieve from the beginning. So now that we have the kind of initial framing done here, we can start to animate this camera backwards. So let's set the start, initial kind of start position. Let's go a little bit more forward so we have more room to go backward and set a keyframe there. So I'm gonna go to the camera and hit shift uh, W and E. So now we have that first keyframe. I'm gonna scrub until all that kind of scaling is done and get to a position that makes kind of sense for the frame that we want to achieve. Let me turn on the grid as well so then I can kind of see if we're actually centered up. You can see that we're not. So if we look at the the number here, it you know it starts at 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. We can see this 5 line is on the back edge of the C and then you can see the 5 is here. So it's way more shifted to the right. So we actually need to pull this to the left and then we can compare these numbers with the grid to really line it up in the center. We can also do that from top to bottom. We can see 10, 10, that looks kind of good, but now, now we can see it's actually centered up. So I'm gonna delete the keyframe that was done on the uh, Translate X here, and I'm gonna delete selected, and I'm gonna rekey it just so that you know we didn't have that shift because it would have shifted over from here to the new position here. We want to keep it in the center throughout the whole thing. So now we can see it is centered and we kind of get back to the end reveal position here, which looks pretty good. We might want to extend that out. I'm just going to hit play so we can watch it. You know, the other thing that I'm noticing is the, the trail here and in, in the it looks like it starts before we're ready for it. So we need to fix that. The mesh, uh, trails mesh, and go to attribute editor. Let's go over to the trails, select it, open up the graph editor. And now we can just move this over a frame or two. One, two, three and play that back and make sure we don't see that little tail handle. I think we weren't seeing it maybe before because it was not purple and visible <laughs> as, as it could be. Cool, so now we have the trail working, we have the camera working. And I think the camera stops a little too abruptly and I'm just clicking this button is the quickest way to select the camera view that you're viewing or you can select it in the outliner here. I'm also gonna rename it render cam just so we can see it clearly when, once we start rendering in the render settings, we know exactly which camera we're gonna render. I'm gonna turn off the grid so we can kind of see it a little bit better. And now I'm gonna open up the graph editor back up. And with the camera selected, we can kind of see the motion it's doing. It's only on translate Z. So I'm gonna isolate that, go to curves, weighted tangents. So now I can have this handle that I can adjust and I wanna give it more time so that it can end more slowly, right? We need to give it more time so I can end more slowly. So with that, I'm gonna play this back, move that out of the way. And I like the timing of how we're revealing it just as it's kind of completing its own transformation and the sphere start and then this starts, it kind of keeps everything active. What I think I would like, you know, one thing I'm thinking is you could maybe keep the camera moving a little bit, but 
kind of like it. I love the chaos of all that stuff falling after it's done everything so nicely and it's put into place and then it all just goes crumbling down. And the last thing we need to keep in mind is we're actually revealing a logo here, right? So it crumbles to reveal the logo, which is the main thing I maybe haven't emphasized enough. We hit it earlier because of the, um, just so we could see the simulation, but we actually want to reveal a nice clean logo. So now that we have the camera animated, we can finish that up. And I kind of like where it's at right now. So now we have the camera animated. We can make sure that it's using it in the render settings under uh, the render settings here. Go to common, scroll down, and make sure the renderable camera is set to render cam. So I'll see you in the next lesson where we will add a shader and add back in the original logo and finish up this, uh, add some more details now that we have a camera to base off our renders off of. Thanks for watching.